Now this is a version of ping pudding. Now the reason we call it ping pudding is it's made, it's a pudding that's made in the microwave, super quick, super naughty, really nice with custard. And there's lots of different versions of this. I do it with chocolate, uh, chocolate cocoa powder, with like a plum jam uh, or cherry jam. Um, I do a vanilla sponge with uh, raspberry jam or uh, you know like a complimentary jam it all came from years ago when they used to make steam puddings and if jam went wrong they'd use it in a pudding at the bottom of a basin and then you turn the steam pudding over and you'd have all the jam coming down and uh, it was it was like a jam volcano and so this is a bit of an experiment i hope it goes well i've just been making um, one of the super smoothies and I've actually got um, some grapes and cherries just a small bowl full and I'm going to because sometimes when you put jam in the pudding it's very very sweet so I thought I wonder how it would come out with fruit so I'm going to give it a go so I think it's off memory four ounces of self-raising flour four ounces of caster sugar two eggs four ounces of uh, stalk or similar uh, you just need a spoon, but one thing you do need, and I know this looks grotty, is a plastic microwavable bowl. Um, this has been through the wars, it's been just been through the dishwasher, it looks awful, but it does the job because it heats the pudding correctly. Uh, normally this pudding can take in the microwave between four and seven minutes depending. And sometimes it's four, sometimes it's more. I don't know why, but you'll get the gist of it when you start making it. It's a good family pudding that you can do easily with very little effort. So I'm going to get started and show you uh, how quick it is. So firstly, your bowl. Now you're not gonna mix in this bowl. This is your cooking bowl. So you want to go around it because it comes up quite high with your margarine and it has to be baking margarine. And that'll just stop the pudding sticking. I didn't say this was healthy, did I? So you put that to one side. And then you want your other bowl that you're mixing in, and you want to zero your scales and start adding your ingredients. You don't have to be too precious with this. I've actually, shock horror, put the flour in before the eggs and before I've creamed the sugar in. Because it's sort of, it's a very rough and ready um, pudding so it doesn't matter too much you know we're not going for I always say we're not going for awards I know you it's important that you get things right for your family um, but it, this is pretty forgiving and if you were in a mixer using a mixer you'd probably uh, do it this way anyway there we are gosh these eggs I don't know if you can see Free range eggs, really fantastic yolks on these. These are a local lady that we buy our eggs from, uh, distant selling. Uh, there we are. In fact, they're quite big. So I think what I'll do, another thing I meant to do, I'm really sorry about this, I should have done it before, um, is add a bit of vanilla extract. Now, I'll tell you what would be lovely with this, because we've got cherries. Oh, can you open that one? Because <laughs> we've got cherries in here. Um, almond e extract would be gorgeous, but our son's not that keen. So I'm going to add some vanilla extract. And because the eggs are so big, I'm going to add, I would say, I don't know what that was, about another ounce. Because it's a very liquidy. With the tray we get from her, um, they're sort of mixed sizes and some are sort of jumbo eggs and some are tiny. So we're up to, I would say, I'm going to put time, five, nearly, we want to maybe get up to five ounces of flour. Anyway, I'll show you, because it's got to really drop off the spoon in three goes. about we're about there one two yeah that'll do as you can see it's very scientific i hope it comes out all right after that and as you could probably see as well i didn't put just a couple of drops of vanilla essence in oh take those for me i'll put quite a few in uh about a teaspoon 
I, I just can't taste it. I don't know if it's because I haven't got a very good palate or something. She's got that virus, Jay. <laughs> so the fact that the sense of taste goes. Thank you. That's <laughs> something to look forward to. Yes. So I'm putting my frozen fruit straight in the bottom. Now, if you were doing jam, what I normally do is put a bit of sponge in, um, put a bit of uh, mixture in the bottom, then I put my jam in, then I enclose it in sponge. I'm going to try it like this. Now, this could all go wrong. Um, possibly could, because I'm filming it. Some of my best things, I don't film everything, are when I don't film and I think, oh, that's a massive success. Uh, and then I never manage to do it again. Let's see, is the spatula up there, Dave? Got my little oh, husband helper. Oh, Woo! Have a help um, no. Okay, we don't know where that is then. Doesn't matter. There we go. I'm just going to go over those gorgeous berries. Like that. Try and get them in if you can. Now, this might take a bit longer because it's actually frozen fruit in there. So I don't know how this is going to work. Let's get rid of the extra on this side. I mean, we, what we should say also is that we've got quite a powerful microwave. This is an E-rated e one, so it's a thousand watts. Most people are at about 750, 800. Oh, how come we got such a powerful one? I don't know. We just do. <laughs> anyway. More power! <laughs> yeah, so we're going to put that in now. And I'll let you know how long it takes and you'll see what it needs to look like when it comes out. So it's going in. So this took six and a half minutes. I think it was because of the frozen fruit. It took a bit longer. So you want it to be quite boingy on the top. Now I'm going to have to be careful uh, turning this out because um, there's still some liquid in there from the fruit. Uh, normally with a jam, the jam's about, but it's not splashy. So this should be very interesting. Now it's had that, I'm gonna just squeeze it round, just in case it's stuck. But I don't mm -hmm. think it is because, her famous last words. You ready for this, Dad? Yeah, here we go. I'm going to do it away from me in case it splashes. Ooh la la, I mean, look at that. I'm gonna just put, pop it into the center. Now look, if you have a look there, where the um, frozen fruit's been, I would say that probably needed a little tiny bit longer on the top. Um, I can always put it back in the microwave. Yeah, I think, I don't know if this it might is. fit. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so put that back in for 30 seconds. And we just switch the camera off. Okay, so this is our pudding. It's got grapes, cherries, blueberries that were frozen in one of the smoothie bags. So I'm just going to open it for you. Remember, at this stage, it is boiling. Now, this is a great pudding to, for kids to watch, you know, cooking in the microwave because it's like magic. It sort of it suits their attention span, really. You can actually watch it rise, but obviously, remember, it's super hot so we've got the fruit on there which I think in future I'm going to do this because the jam is super sweet and look at this let me move this out of the way put, put it back towards you okay there we are some good old birds custard now isn't that the most fantastic pudding if you fancy something super sweet at night and you want to do something very, very quick. Um, easy peasy lemon squeezy. So that's our, what should we call that? Our fresh berry ping pudding. So that's six and a half minutes. We did put it in for 30 seconds more because obviously we weren't used to the fresh fruit. Um, on this plate upside down. So if ever you get a little bit of runny egg, that's a good thing to do. Make sure your egg's cooked. And that is so, not completely naughty, but it's there is some fruit in there, so it does come under your um, five a day, I suppose. <laughs> mm, maybe not. Anyway, thank you for watching, and we're going to enjoy this now. Mm.